Hey everyone, welcome to our third video of the STEM mini physics videos. And this is the third video for introductions. And today we're gonna to be talking about physics as a model. So when we first talk about models, it's really important to consider what systems we're dealing with, of which we have three. The first is an open system, which exchanges matter and energy with its surroundings. So an example is a pot of boiling water with the lid off. And this is able to exchange both water vapor, so that's the matter, and energy because the heat that it's releasing. We also have closed systems, which only exchange energy, so no matter is released. An example of this is a pot of boiling water as well, but instead the lid is put on top. And therefore, no water vapor can escape from the pot, and instead, just the heat will escape through conduction. And finally, we have isolated systems, and this exchanges neither matter nor energy into the surroundings. And there are pretty much no isolated systems in the universe. They're pretty hard to come by. So we have to take that into consideration. But of course, in AC Physics 1, we do assume that everything is an isolated system truly because that simplifies the problem. An example of this is a thermoflask, which comes pretty close, not exactly perfect though, because of course it doesn't exchange matter. The boiling water, for example, will stay within the flask. And for the most part, the energy is conserved from escaping from the flask, but it isn't completely conserved. The reason that we wanted to bring this up was because when we keep what system we have in mind, we can really draw out what factors could impact the motion. So this can be objects, so we know what objects are in it, if there's any friction, forces, air resistance, things like that. And now we're going to be talking about how to display motion in terms of graphs. So we have three main types here. We have position versus time, velocity versus time, and acceleration versus time. And here we're going to think of a car traveling at a constant acceleration. So first off, we can think about the position versus time graph. And it might actually be easier to think about it from the acceleration point of view, but we will work backwards when I explain all of them first this way. So here we have a curve because the rate of the rate should be constant. For velocity, we have a straight line because the rate of this line, which is basically a, the slope, should be constant. And in this case, as you can see, it goes straight up and then again to the next box and to the next box, it exactly has the exact same slope. And therefore, we have this equation. It's the slope of this line should produce this line. So therefore, Velocity should be the change of x over the change in time. And we, of course, know that the acceleration is constant. Therefore, it's the exact straight line. And the equation for this is that the rate is that acceleration is equal to the rate of velocity by the rate of time. Now, it will be helpful to work backwards. So we know that acceleration is equal to rate uh, the change in velocity over the change in time. Therefore, whatever value is on this graph must be the velocity the slope of this graph. Because this is at a constant level, there's no change, it's just straight horizontal. We know that the slope of this line must be constant, therefore we have a linear growth. And on this one, the slope is continuously changing because velocity is the rate at which the position changes. Therefore we get this sort of curve. And now we can also think about drawing out the situation that we're working with. Of course, this is a bit of a more complex problem to where we are right now, is dealing with two-dimensional momentum. But it is a really great example to keep in mind what we're talking about when we say draw out the situation. So we see here the point of collision and the object before the collision. We have A traveling in this direction at five meters per section per second. And the second object, B, is completely stationary. And then after this collision, if we call this the straight line, we can say that A is 30 degrees above and B is some unknown at theta. We also know the final velocity of A is two meters per second in this direction and B is an unknown. So these type of diagrams are really helpful when we try to actually visualize the problem we can understand the direction and the movement of this object. For example, we know that A has a 30 degree um, angle and it's going in this direction. It can also help us understand the reasonable answers to think about. 
For example, if you look here, we know that this angle is greater than 30. So it must be some value greater than 30. And if we get two degrees, it doesn't make that much sense. And it also helps us distinguish what variables we know and what we don't know. By labeling theta and the velocity of b, we know that these are the two main variables that we don't have an answer to. Whether or not we solve for each and every one of them, it does rule out things that we can and cannot do in terms of our process for solving. So that's it for this video on how to see physics in terms of models. Hope you really enjoyed that video. Make sure to give this video a like and comment below. And of course, check out all the other wonderful videos that STEMI has put up on YouTube. Thank you so much.